Well, good morning. Yeah, got a little applause there for the bumper. That's good. It's good to see y'all. Uh, welcome. For those of you who were supposed to be in here an hour ago, welcome. Uh, for those of you uh, who are still watching us online because you just didn't realize you, you, you're late, so uh, welcome to you. Welcome to downtown in Seminole. Thank you guys for coming and being a part. It's a busy weekend, a lot of things going on. You could have chosen to be anywhere, but you chose to be here, so for that, we're grateful. Last week, we started this series where we're talking about uh, the world that oftentimes we assign to our lives. This, this world that we live in that appears to be unattainable for a lot of us. Or it appears to be uh, something that we can't connect to. We, we look at the, the negative aspects of our world instead of realizing that, yes, that is a world, but it's not necessarily the world that God has something more for us. So what we want you to do today is lean into the idea that maybe there's something more that God has for my life. Maybe God wants to do something unexpected for you today, right? We kind of come in here, we get in our normal patterns. I know you guys have normal patterns because I watch you. Many of you park in the same spots every single week, don't you? You kind of, and, and, and you get mad when somebody's in your spot. Somebody's in my spot, right? Some of you sit in the same chairs every week. How do I know? Because I stand here and look at you. Okay, I know where they are. I know where you are. And I know, and I know you guys, that are, you're going to get to them. It doesn't matter if anybody else is up there. You're going up there, right? Because that's just what we do. But what if God wanted to do something unexpected for you today? And so today what I want to talk to you about is moving from unattainable to maybe that unexpected thing that God wants for you. What if today was meant to be your day? What if today was meant to be something beyond that normal Sunday where you just go through the motions, do your thing? What if God wanted to do something extraordinary in your life? That's what I want to talk about. Because you and I, sometimes, we, we kind of fall into the expected. As a matter of fact, this big idea, sometimes God has something better for you than what you are expecting, right? Sometimes he has something so much greater out there. But what happens is we miss out on that because we get focused. We just go through the motions. We sit in our normal, comfortable, which, by the way, breeds what? Complacency. We get complacent because we just kind of do the thing, and we don't expect anything different. I don't know who shared this thought, but I remembered it. Uh, expectation is the breeding ground for miracle. Right? A lot of times people ask me, so Tim, why, why don't we see miracles like we used to see in the Bible, you know, read the the Bible, we see all these miracles. Why don't we see miracles like that? Well, I would argue that we do see those miracles, right? They're happening all around us. But I would also say that many times we miss out on the miracles because we don't expect them. We don't act as if those miracles do, should, do and should exist in our lives. What if we had expectations? What's sad is just, just Google expectations, just go home and do this. It'll be a great exercise for you. Google expectations. What you're going to get is a lot of quotes saying don't have any expectations. Because if you don't have any expectations, then everything's a win. Right? If you don't have any expectations, then you don't have so far to fall. Or you don't feel like you've missed out. What if we did the opposite of that? What if we had great expectations? What if we believed in a best next? What if we acted as if that next existed for us? Now, last week I shared with you that I would, or I encourage you to read through the book of Acts during this week. Some of you did that because you communicated that to me. You sent me emails or texts or you let me know by posting what you're responding to that. I still want to encourage you to do that because Acts is the birth of the church. We get to see the church kind of being born, and, and we see how the church in that new early stage, how it kind of reflected who Jesus was and, and, and the impact that it had, and we're encouraged because that same impact can be had today. 
So I would encourage you to go back and look at the Acts. So I want us to push into Acts a little bit because there's this great story about expectations, about moving from what appears to be unattainable, what appears to be impossible, towards something maybe that we haven't even thought about yet. An expectation maybe that we haven't even dreamed about. And it's found in Acts chapter 3. So if you've got your Bible or your phone, whatever you have the Bible on, I encourage you to turn there. And uh, I'm going to bring it on the screen for us and, and help us understand it. So Acts chapter 3, beginning at verse 1, it says, Now one day, Peter and John, now we remember who those are. Those are the two of the disciples, the followers of Jesus. Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. Now, you need to understand that Jesus has already ascended to the Father. He's told the disciples to go out and share the gospel. So they were going around and preaching and teaching. You also need to understand that Peter and John were very, very, very close friends. They had been lifelong friends. They were two of the fishermen that Jesus called when he asked, when we, he was calling his disciples. They were two of the fishermen that he said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. They had been fishing buddies together. They had been in business together. Uh, they had been lifelong friends and they remained that way. So it was very normal for Peter and John to be hanging out together. Now they're hanging out and they're on their way to the temple to pray. Now, not only are they going to pray, which is what a good Jewish uh, person did during that time. They would go three times a day. They would go in the morning, and then they would go around noontime, and then they would go in the evening, or three o'clock in the afternoon uh, would be their evening time. And, and so not only were they going and doing their obligation to go and pray, but they were also maybe seeking an opportunity to preach because they knew large groups of people would be gathering around the temple and they could share this gospel message, this good news of Jesus uh, that they wanted the world to know. So you kind of understand what's going on. Peter and John, these two friends, it's in every average day. It's, it's a pretty normal process that they're going through. And then in verse 2, it says, Now a man was lame from birth and he was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple court. So the, the second part of the story is there's this guy who's crippled. Now, he had been crippled from birth. He had never walked. Uh, he had been born some genetic thing, some birth defect, whatever it was. This man was being carried to the temple, and he had been carried to the temple every day of his life. So this was, again, a very normal process. Scholars tell us that he was somewhere around 40 years old. So for 40 years, this man would be carried to the temple gates, and there he would sit, and he would beg for a few pennies. Because if he could get just a few pennies, a few alms, as the Scripture says, if he could get just a little bit of money, then he could be sustained until the next day where he would do it over and over and over again. See, sometimes that's where we kind of find ourselves. We, we're just trying to get from one day to the next day. Just one week to the next week. We're, we're just trying to survive. When God has called us to thrive, God has called us for so much more. But what we do is we get, just, we get used to and we think that this life, this, this, this incredible life that we're promised or that we potentially see in other people, we think it's unattainable to us. That's for them. This is my life. We just resign ourselves to this is the way it's always going to be because this is the way it's always been. Maybe that's you today. You're just trying to get through the day. Just trying to get through the week. What if God wants to do something unexpected in you? What if he wants to take you someplace you haven't even thought about? What if he wants to do something you haven't even imagined? That's where this guy is. He's going to the temple gates. Now, notice it says they carried He had friends, people who would carry him, and they would carry him to the gate, and they would set him down. Somebody asked me after the early service, why didn't they take him into the temple? Well, because that was unattainable for him, right? Because in their culture, somebody who was crippled at birth was cursed. So not only was he looked upon as this cripple, this beggar, 
But he was looked upon as cursed. He was looked upon as an ugly part of society. It's kind of interesting that he was sitting in front of the gate called Beautiful. Now, the temple had 10 different gates. This gate was significant because it was one of the larger gates. The average gate was about 35 feet high. That's a big gate, right? But the gate, beautiful, was about 75 feet high. And it was very adorned. It had brass. It had all of this bright work on it. It was, it was very pretty, very adorned. And it was important because in that culture, women were only allowed to enter through one gate. They were only allowed to enter this one gate. And, and so this beggar, this crippled man, knew that if he sat at this gate, he would have a higher opportunity to connect with people. Because not only would be men going through there, there would be women, and it was a larger gate, so there would be more masses coming through it. So you get the picture. This crippled guy, this ugly part of society, according to them, is sitting in front of this beautiful gate because he couldn't attain anything else and by the way for his friends to even take him in the temple which was unattainable but for them to do that would be for him to miss out on the opportunity to beg outside the temple so he wasn't about to do anything different than what he'd always done because he didn't have any expectations any higher than what had already happened is that you are you just sitting at the gate not expecting anything different, just trying to survive, just trying to see what is next, just, just trying to make it through the day. No expectation of anything greater. That's this guy. Peter and John happen to be walking through that gate. And it says, when he saw Peter and John about to enter, the beggar asked them for money. Hey, could you help me out here? And then notice that Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Now, in the Jewish culture, for a person to walk by, acknowledge somebody in need, and not help them was a sin. So what they would do is what you and I do. They just wouldn't look at him. See, that's what we do. We drive up to the intersection, somebody's standing there with a cardboard sign, and we suddenly become very, very attentive to what's going on on the floorboard of our cars. Do we not? Or the radio suddenly needs our attention. Or there's something over here in the distance that has our focus. Why? Because if we don't look at them, they're not there. But notice, Peter and John, they see him. And they look directly at him. What would happen if you and I would start seeing the world around us? Seeing the need. See, we want to be seen, but we don't want to see. What unexpected thing could God use you in? What unexpected thing or relationship could happen in your life if you would just pay attention to what's around you. Think about that. So Peter looked straight at him, as did John. And then Peter said, look at us. See, he's saying, hey, I see you. I need you to see me. But what I want you to know is not only do I want you to see me, I want you to see me seeing you. Because you and I, are going to see something unexpected. He said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Expecting to get a few pennies, because that is all he's ever gotten. Expecting to get just a little change, maybe something to carry him through just today, so that he can do it all again tomorrow because he's never expected things to be any different than they are if that's you today are your expectations of today just i'm going to come and i'm just going to hang out and do my thing and then right what if god wanted to do something completely different for you 
What if God wanted to do something unexpected? What are your expectations, by the way? See, we're told in our culture that you don't have any expectations, and then you don't have any failures. Don't have any expectations, and you're not disappointed. What if, what if we did have expectations? Expectations for our life. What is your expectation for you? What do you expect for your life? Your family, your friends, your community, your city. Your world. What if you and I had a different set of expectations out there? It reminds me of a story of a young man who had a miserable life. I mean, it was just miserable. And he had tried everything to try to kind of find some hope for his future. And he decided to go to a palm reader. So he looks up palm readers and he finds one and he goes to visit her and Sticks out his palm, and she begins to do her thing, whatever that thing is. And she begins to shake her head. And she looks at the young man, and she says, You're going to have a miserable life until you're 41 years old. And maybe that's you. Maybe you're my age and you're just looking for that day when you can retire because you see everything is just miserable up until then. <laughs> or maybe you're in reverse. Maybe you're looking back and going, everything's miserable now. If I could just go back here where everything was great. Or maybe you haven't found anything but misery yet. Young man looks at her. She's shaking her head. You're going to have a miserable life until you're 41. And then he, it, it was frustrating and it just killed him until he thought, but only until I'm 41. So he looked at the palm reader and he said, will I have a great life after I'm 41? No. But by the time you're 41, you won't care anymore. <laughs> and that is where a lot of us are. We don't care anymore. We don't have anything. We don't expect anything different. It's just going to be the way it is. What if it wasn't meant to be that way? What if God had a plan? What if he's always had a plan? And what if you and I follow that plan, what unexpected things could happen in our lives that we see as unattainable? What if God wanted to do something unexpected for you today? Last week I told you to read about the early church in the book of Acts. And if we go back just a little bit from this story, this is Acts 3. We don't know exactly how long it has been since Jesus went to be with the Father. We don't know how long it's been since he challenged them as he did in Matthew. He said, go into all the world and teach, preach, share the gospel as we talked about last week. We don't know how long it's been, but it's not been a long time. It's a very short amount of time. What if that plan, that, that thing that Peter and John were doing in that moment, what if that was all a part of God's plan that they had been following from the very beginning. Let's go back in Acts chapter 1. And see what that plan looks like. Jesus is saying to them. I'm going to be the father. And they said. But when are you going to build your earthly kingdom? He said. This is not the time for you to know that. He said. But you will receive power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses. You'll share that gospel message. In Jerusalem. And in all Judea. And Samaria. And to the end of the earth. See, they were still trying to figure out how this thing was going to fit into their expectations when God had something so much greater in store for them. And Jesus said, it doesn't matter. You're not going to know that time when the kingdom will come in the way that you're thinking. He said, that's not important. But what you need to know is you have a job and I'm going to send you a helper. I'm going to give you a gift. It's my spirit. And if you will allow that spirit to work in, through, and for you, you're going to see amazing things happen. And so here's what I want you to do. I want you to go and be my witnesses. Share this story. I want you to share it 
in some very important places. First of all, he said, go to Jerusalem. What was Jerusalem? That was home. He thought, once you start at home. But also notice what else Jerusalem was. What else was Jerusalem? Jerusalem was where they had screwed up. Because Jerusalem was where Jesus had been killed. And they had denied him and run away. He said, I want you to go and... He said, I want you to go where you messed up. See, a lot of us are not seeing this incredible life that God has for us because we're still living in our mess. This week, somebody asked me, said, why am I not seeing my prayers answered? We did this Ask series, and they were responding. And I said, maybe, and I listed a few reasons why uh, those prayers may not be answered. One being that, that maybe God wants to do more for you than you're asking. But also, maybe one of those things is the obstacles that you're allowing to stay in your life. You see, you've messed up, but you're unwilling to clean that up. And because of that obstacle, God is not going to give you your next because you haven't taken care of your present. See, he said, I want you to go to Jerusalem where you messed up. I want you to go home. Then he said, I want you to go to Judea. Now, what was Judea? Judea was their country. Judea was people that they didn't know, but people who were like them. Right? So they, so they, didn't, they didn't know these people, but, but they were like them. And he said, hey, I don't want you just to stop with people you know. I want you to go to people who you don't know. And then he said, I want you to go to Samaria. Now, who were Samaritans? They were the people. The Samaritans were people that they didn't even like. He said, I want you to go to people you don't see because the Jews and the Samaritans didn't like each other. As a matter of fact, they hated each other. They would not have any conversations with each other. Here's what Jesus said. I want you to go to people you've been unwilling to go through to ever before. I want you to go to people you don't even like. Think about who you don't like. Think about who you don't like. I mean, really don't like them. Maybe your obstacle to the unexpected thing God has for you is your unwillingness to go to that person. Maybe. But God has called us to go to people who we don't like. And then he said, I want you to go to the end of the earth. In other words, I don't want you to stop. There's no end to this process. I want you to keep doing that. I want you to go until that we've exhausted all the opportunities to go. Go to the ends of the earth. So if we go back in the story, Peter and John are just acting upon what Jesus had shared with them. And they were doing it boldly and courageously because you remember, Peter and John were still at great risk. Why? Because they had crucified Jesus and they were out to get those who had followed him closely. So they were at great risk. As a matter of fact, in Acts 2, we see them stepping out in spite of that risk. And again, maybe you're not realizing the unexpected things that God wants to do for you because you've not been willing to risk. Listen, if you're not doing something that scares you just a little bit every day, then you're not doing anything. I got the opportunity to speak to some local pastors this week at a pastor's luncheon, and I just got in their face. I said, if you're not doing something that scares, that you just pucker up, then you're not doing anything. And it is time for God's church to be the risk agents that God has called us to be. Maybe that's your obstacle. And in Acts chapter 2, we see them doing that. They're preaching in front of the very people who crucified Jesus. And here's what they said. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst as you yourselves know. Just in case you don't know who I'm talking about, we're talking about that guy. They wanted to make sure. Just in case you think I'm talking about somebody else and you're a little confused, I want to make sure you know I'm talking about the guy that did the miracles. You know, the one that you crucified. They go on in verse 23. This Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. In other words, it wasn't your deal. This was God's plan. You crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. Imagine being called out like that. But they did. Why? 
Because they knew, they believed that something greater existed beyond what they had done. And that what once was viewed as unattainable, as they hid in an upper room, afraid to go out, that now might be possible for them. To this guy, just in case you don't know who we're talking about, that's the man I'm talking about. This Jesus, deliver it up. I want you to know what happened, they said. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death. I know you've heard the rumors, and I know that the leaders and the rulers are trying to tell you it didn't happen. But we want you to know it's true, because it was not possible for him to be held by the grave that you thought you put him in. That's the kind of stuff, guys, that leads to possibilities. Peter got so bold that he stood up and said these words. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. I don't care what you do to me. I don't care what you say about me. I don't care the risk because what was once unattainable is now attainable in Christ because if he can be risen from the dead, then he can certainly take care of me and I'm going to stand here and do exactly what he told me to do because he's got a plan and he wants to do something unexpected, not only in me, but in you. And that statement, that truth is no less true Today, but you and I have to believe it. But see, we're just going through the moment. Well, that's unattainable. That's not going to happen. What could happen for you? I was reminded recently, as I've been writing, uh, about a time in my life when um, when I was in a bad place. I'm talking about a really bad place, a place that if you knew about that place, you probably wouldn't be here today. Because you wouldn't let me stand and talk to you. And I had a few friends who were willing to speak into my life. By the way, if you've got one or two friends that are willing to tell you the truth, then you've got real friends. And the rest of them, they're just Facebook posts. So these friends spoke into my life. And one particular said, I need to ask you some questions because, see, I'd gotten to the point where I didn't have any expectations for, that my life would be any different. And what I saw as possible in my life for other people was unattainable to me. And I had a friend who set me down and asked me these three questions. The first one is, what is? What is? What, what's true about you? What, 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 what is, what, what, what's going on? Be honest with yourself. What is? And then they said, what could be? What is, but what could be? What are the possibilities for you? What if your life could be different? What if you could step away from all the things that are sucking life out of you? What could be? What is? What could be, and the third question, and this one was the most important, you ready? What will be? What will be if you don't change? But what will be if you do? What will be if you just keep going the direction you're going? But what will be if you turn? I want to ask you those questions today. What is? What is, what is true about you? Have you fallen into the unexpected? Have you fallen into the unattainable? I don't expect anything anymore. I don't care anymore. I'm complacent. I'm apathetic. It's just, I, this is it. I'm just begging for pennies. Trying to get through the day. Trying to get through the week. Trying to get to whatever. What is? But what could be? What if God wanted to do something totally unexpected for you we see evidence in these stories do you know what happened in the stories in, in in the first story peter stands up and boldly says this man this christ this one you crucified he's who he said he was 
And something crazy happened. In Acts chapter 2, he says, Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. These are the people that had screamed for Jesus' life. They were cut to the heart and said Peter, to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? What do we do? What needs to change in us? Let me ask you, what needs to change in you? Peter said to them, Repent, be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The same thing that now carries me, that same thing that now strengthens me, that same thing that now drives me, it's available to you. But you have to repent and you have to be baptized. Last week I shared this big idea. The message of the gospel, the good news of Jesus is always a call to repentance and faith. Always. Look at me. Look at me, don't miss this. Downtown Seminole, online, don't miss this. You ready? Unless you've repented and stepped in faith, that means not in your works, but in grace, then you don't have a relationship with the Father through Jesus. I don't care how many times you sit in these comfortable chairs. I don't care how many times you've served, how many babies you've rocked, how many doors you've held open. I don't care how much money you've put in that bucket. I don't care what your parents did when you were younger, holding you up, baptizing you, doing whatever it is that they wanted to do to give you to the Father. It has nothing to do with any of that. It has everything to do with faith and repentance and stepping into the grace that only Jesus can give you. And if you have not done that, maybe, maybe today is your unexpected day. You thought you were just going to come to church. And park in your parking space and sit in your seat and eat your chocolate-covered donut. <laughs> Maybe God wants to do something totally new to you. The story goes on. Acts 2 says, for the promises for you and for your children and for all who are far off. It doesn't matter how far you've gone. Everyone whom the Lord calls to himself. And then notice what happens. And with many other words, he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourself from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized. And there were added that day about 3,000 souls. Why don't you and I see that happen today? Because we don't expect it. We don't expect it. But what if we did? What if we see as unattainable? God sees as totally doable. See, you need to know this thought. Maybe you're not receiving the expected because you're not doing the unexpected. Maybe you're not receiving the unexpected because you haven't acted like there's something unexpected going to happen. Maybe you're not doing. See, they didn't expect Peter and John. They didn't expect the disciples to stand up and be so bold. They thought they had killed that thing. But when they did the unexpected, God did the unexpected and lives were changed. The very lives that he called for Jesus' death were now followers of him. So what happened in the story that we talked about earlier? The guy sitting at the gate, Peter and John say, look at me. They see him. They say, look at me. And here's what happens. Peter said, I have no silver or gold. I'm just a broke preacher. I got nothing. But. What I do have, I'm going to give to you. See, how many times you say, I don't have anything to give? Really? Really? You don't have anything? He says, I'm not going to give you what you expect me to give you. A few pennies to carry you through the day. I'm going to give you something unexpected. He said, silver and gold don't know, I don't have. But in the name of Jesus Christ, of Nazareth, rise up. And walk. Can you imagine that? This guy's never walked. He's in his 40s. He's never walked. He's never done anything more than sit at the gate and beg. And just survive. And Peter looks at him and says, get up and walk. 
And he took him by the right hand and he raised him up. And immediately, not sometime in the future, not accidentally, but on purpose, immediately his ankles were made strong. What was weak was now strong. What couldn't now can. What was unattainable is now attainable. And that promise, guys, is for you, not just for the cripple at the gate. What was ugly was now beautiful. What couldn't happen now could happen. What was unbelievable now was evident. And you know what happened? He says he leaped up. He stood and began to walk. And what was once unattainable, the ability to go into the temple was now possible. He entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. See, you and I, here's what, here's what we do. No, 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 no. Listen, here's what we do. We, we, we come into church going, oh, got to go to church. Oh, some of you got up this morning, oh, I lost an hour sleep. What? <laughs> we just, oh, man, it's so hard to find a parking space. And somebody's in my seat. <laughs> Lost an hour of sleep. Traffic's going to be hard getting out of here. Kids are just a mess. What if we came in leaping and praising? What if we came in excited? What if we came in filled with the spirit that God had gifts each and every one of us? What if that happened? And then notice what happens. It says, and all the people, not some of the people, all the people saw him walking and praising God. They're going, what? And then notice it says, and they recognize him as the one who sat at the beautiful gate, the one who was ugly, the one who was cursed, the one who couldn't. They saw him. They recognized him. The one they turned their head away from, the one that they pretended did not exist. He was now with them. He was in the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Why is the world not filled with amazement? About what is happening here? Because nothing's happening here. We're going through the motions. What would happen if we expected something different? You see, expectation is the belief that God will fulfill his promises... It's expecting God to do exactly what he says he will do. And he will do exactly what he says he will do if you allow it. What does he want to do? Ephesians 3 says, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think according to the power at work within us, to him be the glory in the church, that's you, and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. And everybody said... Amen. What would happen if we allowed the unexpected to happen? What if we stepped away from what we view as unattainable and watched God do his thing? Maybe today is that day for you. Let's pray together. Father, I come to you in this moment. Realizing you want to do so much more than I can think or imagine. And i got a great imagination, God. But you want to do more than I can even think about, dream about, even consider as a possibility. God, forgive me for us where we just expect the normal thing and we're scrapping for pennies when you want to give us the riches of heaven. God, so many of my friends think, well, if I just go through the motions, everything will be great. And you know what? It might be great in the world, God, but man, you have so much more. What if, God, we acted as if you were God and you do what you said you would do? What if we followed your plan? I'm grateful for Peter, John, who followed the plan, trusted you, regardless of the risk, regardless of the unknown. They trusted you, and you used them, and lives were changed. Their life, the lives around them. God, that could happen for us. I think that's what you want, but we've got to expect it. 
Help us to move from unattainable to the unexpected life that you have for each and every one of us. And that life is found in one place and one place only. A relationship with Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen.